Hi, this is Annie Grace, and welcome to This Naked Mind Podcast. Today, I'm here with Lorraine. Welcome, Lorraine. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you. How are you, Annie? I'm good. I'm really good. So, um, yeah, why don't you tell us about your story? Sort of back me up to the beginning. Tell me a bit about you. Okay, sure thing. Uh, First of all, I just wanted to thank you so much on my behalf and the behalf of so many others that you've helped. I mean, your, your combination of, of empathy and your research and the way that you take these pieces of information from all these other bodies of work, you know, Dr. Sarno and liminal thinking, and, and you make this process that has allowed so many of us to actually give up alcohol when I, I never thought I would <laughs> completely. And it was so easy because you made it so easy. I, I just wanted to, to really thank you. And, and I love seeing your, the, the news pieces that you do, like the Windy City that you did the other day. And oh, yeah. Was that your son in the picture? He is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I love the way that the news anchors are always so fascinated and interested, right? And they always question you. And I, I think uh, it's just fantastic. I love seeing all these new, the new podcasts and new videos. I just wanted to say that number one. That oh, that's I, awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're, you're welcome. Uh, in compelling TV, I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so my my journey with with alcohol probably started at birth. <laughs> Pretty much, my my father was kind of the you know the, the alcoholic. Um, left our, the, his family, left me and my mom and my sister when we were very young because uh, he drank too much. He he's now been sober for like 30 years, and I have a relationship with him now, but. Uh, Back then, it was it was a little tough times, and it was 100% because of alcohol. And for years, he would tell me, "Alcohol's a poison." Alcohol, <laughs> and I would be like, "Whatever." <laughs> I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want. I wasn't ready to hear it yet, um, because he's come, you know, to that realization through AA, through the normal channels. Uh, so after he left, and I moved in with my grandparents when I was a teenager in high school, they were pretty much binge drinkers. So on the weekends, if I smelled alcohol in my grandpa's breath, I just knew it was, it was going to be on. And those two, you know, they're from, they were from Oklahoma and Arkansas, you know, they were, they would throw stuff. I mean, there'd be these huge fights. I'd have to try to break them up. I was like 14 or 15. And I was like, I am never going to drink alcohol. You know, I'm, I hated druggies and people that smoked and, you know, gay people randomly, right? I thought at the time, <laughs> I was right. like, I was just had all this, this hate and rage towards these people. But I finally came to realize it's because I was destined to become all those things <laughs> and learn the hard way. I was, you know, des- you know, that's just the way that I learned, I guess. So whenever I would see my grandparents fight, I would just like, why do they do this to themselves? Why? I just didn't understand it. And uh, I worked in, whenever I was young, I worked in the fast food industry. So my boss, he wanted to be the cool boss. Uh, so he'd give these 16, 17, 18 year old kids alcohol. We'd go to his house, go party. And it wasn't anything insidious. It was just like, hey, you know, yeah, let's just have fun and have a good time. So that was my, the beginning of my little foray into it. And then once I realized, really realized that I was gay, uh, I started getting into drugs more, uh, not so much alcohol. And I remember I got a DUI, but because I was under the influence and I had to go to AA meetings because it wasn't really, it was back in the late eighties, right? So it wasn't really a thing. I was like, I don't even drink. (laughs) But I remember going to the AA meeting going, well, how many these people, (laughs) this alcohol really messes you up. (laughs) Right. I was able to get off the drugs, but then it became the slow slide with alcohol in my 20s and in my 30s a little bit more, especially in my 40s, it really started to, to ramp up, right? Um, and then I'm, I'm going to turn 52 this year. So if my 50th birthday, I don't, I don't even remember. I, I know how you always talk about like lost memories, stolen memories, how alcohol steals your memory well definitely stole that day for me and so many others uh, that were, you know, I love mountain biking. I love to be active, but I would lose a day, a whole day because I felt like crap on Sundays, you know, I, oh no, I don't want to get, I can't go biking. I just feel too, too crummy. So I knew that I I had a problem because I was sneaking 
alcohol, like I'd come in and I'd take a shot out of the freezer, or I'd have a bottle hidden in the office, or I'd have it hidden in the bathroom, or on my nightstand, or in for for a long time, I just said, oh, you know what, I'm bigger than my wife, I need a little bit more to be able to get that same high, so I'm just gonna, you know, just take a, take a little bit more without her knowing, right? So yeah. I would tell her, I would, back then, you know, I would say, you know, I think I might be an alcoholic, you know, I think I might have a problem, but we both like drinking so much, we kind of were able to push it aside and say, well, it's, it's not that bad, <laughs> you know, you're not rock bottom, you know, and I wasn't honest with her. So I was honest about sneaking the booze. So she, she had no way to, to, you know, she didn't know how bad it was actually getting. Mm. Um, but she knew that it was <laughs> that it was bad and i think i made her drink a little bit more too because we, you know you, you get oh i had a hard day at work so i'm gonna grab a six pack and you know mm-hmm. it just it's just so insidious so i would always be thinking about it too always the, the scheduling okay i'm gonna go to a friend's house oh they drink wine they have great wine so oh we're gonna have a good time there and then we're gonna go to a restaurant to dinner hopefully we don't go to that one that doesn't have any booze and it was always at that thinking ahead, when's the next time I'm going to drink? I, I wouldn't even go a whole week without drinking unless I was like deathly ill. And even then it was like, oh, a hot toddy will fix me. <laughs> you know? So it was always thinking about it, scheduling it, sneaking it, um, not being able to go even a week. I couldn't even, I, I, I never even really tried. I mean, I tried to talk to my doctor about it. So I talked to my doctor and I, and I said, you know, I think I need, I need this naltrexone stuff. You know, I've heard mm-hmm. about that. So she's like, okay, well, you know, here's this book, read this book too about moderation. And then here's, here's the pills if you want them. I didn't like the pills because then you don't get the highs. Why would I, why, you know, <laughs> you right. <have> the taste. <laughs> so I didn't like the pills. The book was it just wasn't for me. I just couldn't do it. It was too much. Okay, well, take keep track of all your drinks and keep track of what your blood alcohol percentage is and don't go over this. But you know, I, was, I, I'm an accountant. I couldn't even follow the numbers. <laughs> so I was like, no, that's that's not going to work for me. So then I just kind of put put it aside and and I knew that my like my glucose totals were high. My triglycerides were high. And they were getting higher each time. So I just didn't have a didn't test it for, for a year and a half because I, I just knew that it would be a little bit higher and higher and it was because of the alcohol. Mm-hmm. So I knew I had to do something, but I really, I didn't know what, I had no idea. I had no idea what. And on December 1st of last year, we went to the movies and, and nowadays movies are like the full bar scene, right? So the, there's this one movie theater, they bought out the bar next to them, totally redid it, it's beautiful. <laughs> you know, they have great people working there. You go and you can have a couple of drinks for the movie. You can take your martini glass or your beer glass and bring it in with the movie with you. So, you know, we had three, four drinks and we were waiting for a couple of friends and the, the friends came and they were like the two biggest drinkers that of all of our friends, besides me, it was like me and them. So I knew whenever I was with them, I was probably going to get messed up <laughs> and they hadn't drank in months. And I was like, really? I was like, God, that's incredible. So at the end of the movie, I, I went to my one friend and I said, how, you know, how did you do this? And she's like, just read Andy Grace's book. <laughs> I can't, I can't even explain it. I don't, I'm not even going to go into it. Just read this naked mind. That's it. <laughs> and I remember we went out for like another beer afterwards and it was really strong. And the next morning I felt so horrible when I woke up, I felt so bad. And I remembered your name and I was like, what did she say? Annie, Annie Grace. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> so I got on my Kindle, I downloaded it and I read it like two or three days. I haven't had a drink since. Oh, amazing. That was my, my last drink was that super strong beer that just <laughs> made me have a bad hangover and then really made me read the book. And it was just, it was like, it was magic because I believe in science. <laughs> right. So yep. that is the key. It's like, it's scientific. It's, you know, your subconscious believes one thing, your conscious can't make it believe something else just by saying it once, it has to relearn, right? So, I mean, I do get twinges now and then, you know, we like go to a friend's house, and they have the, the full bar set up, 
<laughs> where usually I'd be like, oh, what do I want to drink first? You know? and, and, and it's like, why can't I do that? I'll, I'll start thinking, why can't, why can't I you know, have a drink once in a while? And usually I try to practice a lot of self-compassion, but when those come up, there's no self-compassion. <laughs> I, I just beat it down with a stick. And I say, do you remember all those hangovers? Remember all those parties that you don't remember? Remember how crummy you feel like two or three hours after you've started drinking? <laughs> and so, so, and then after that, I'm fine. <laughs> I just have my soda or my club soda and yeah, I'm good. And, and I did do another blood test three months after I stopped drinking and my glucose went down 20 points and my triglycerides went down 50 points. So, I mean, just right there. I mean, I was like, how much damage that we do to our bodies by drinking alcohol. It's just insane. It's just it's insane. insane. Yeah. It, it, I think it, it's a testament to how amazing our bodies are that it can take all that <laughs> for years and years and years. So I've been looking for, you know, one thing that I was hoping would be more weight loss, but at least it's going in. <laughs> only lost like five pounds. I'm like, wait a second. I drank like 15, 20 drinks a week, a time yeah. calories. I'm like, how can I only be losing like one pound a month? <laughs> but I'm not going to complain because it's going the right direction, right? So, you know, I, and my wife drinks a lot less. You know, she 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 can have one beer and and that's it. And you know, which is incredible. And and I I've, I've passed the book on to other people who stopped drinking. Um, and I think it's just because people like me who are kind of the moderate. Right, that we're not at the rock bottom. We're not just, oh yeah, I could have one. It's not, I could never have one and stop. <laughs> I was like, what's, the, why? Right. <laughs> yeah, so people like me that are kind of in the middle, I think need to hear these stories and say, you know what, yeah, there, there's no reason why you can't, you know, ask yourself, am I drinking too much? And I'm like, I love that how you say, there is no alcoholics. Alcohol is addictive. You know, it's not me, it's you, alcohol. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's, it is addictive, right? So I, I, now my dream is, you know, kind of helping others and helping them um, if, they, if they want, if they want to stop. And, and just by sharing stories, I think that's how people start thinking about it. That's how I started thinking about it. They shared their story. That they yes, started, right? like the four-minute mile, you see somebody doing it and you're like, oh, I could, I could do that. You know, yeah. that doesn't seem so foreign or alien anymore seems yes. like plausible yes yeah so it's i mean and and when you think of the money too right i mean sometimes okay maybe a beer is like two bucks if you buy it at the store because it's like 12 15 bucks now right for a six pack you go out to eat 10 or 15 bucks a drink and times that by all the drinks and i was like oh my gosh i saved like two thousand bucks i'm like a vacation i saved money for it <laughs> A vacation, <laughs> and and it and gives me confidence that I could do other things too, right? So it's like, man, if I could stop drinking, especially around the holidays, and I and I tried to do that on, uh, on purpose. After I thought December first, this is perfect. If I can make it through all the Christmas parties and the vacations and the traveling and New Year's Eve, I could do anything. <laughs> you know, I can make it through anything, and that was the hardest month. And now little things come up. Oh, your first concert without drinking, or your first, you know, gathering without drinking. It's, it's, it, it's like unbelievably easy. <laughs> and I just thank you so much because you're the one that did all the hard work, <laughs> all the research, <laughs> and presented it in a way where people can actually take it in and use it so beautifully. Oh, that's so awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. So how, um, how are you navigating and finding new things do you have any tips for people who kind of new on the journey to to say like some things that you've done that have been really helpful um i i read some of the books that you ha have that i've picked up from you like the the untethered soul or uh like jo dr john sarno some of his books uh i think just always learning Right. It's always, always being curious, I think is the key to, you know, what, curious, what is life without alcohol? What is, you know, what does it look like? It doesn't look like what you might have thought it was whenever you were drinking, <laughs> but 
if you just always are curious and always want to learn and 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 improve improve yourself um i think that's been the biggest thing for me is just to to realize that you know you just can't stop learning yeah just mm -hmm. you, and and i mean the, the books are incredible right so some of the some of these books are are, are great uh they're great stories too yours is more of the process it, it, alcohol explained was really good too yeah that, that was really really good but because it's all the science behind it and a lot of the books are people's stories which are are fantastic and how they dealt with it but i love the books that like I'll explain that I have the science behind it because that's that's what changed my brain <laughs> honestly is that just soaking it up and hearing it over and over again and I you know I think one of the, the main things that got me it was the beginning of your book where you said okay well don't stop drinking and don't stop doing anything different but just be aware of all the commercials all the advertising and all the things, all the times you see people drink in shows and all the times you hear people talk about drinking. And once you do that, you just can't unhear that stuff. <laughs> it's just incredible. It is incredible. And I think that was a huge eye opener for me because I'm like, how did I just miss all this stuff? It was just, it was just so normal. And I think the awareness is key to, to get that awareness about how much alcohol is advertised and how much it's normalized because you know it's not normal to put poison in your body <laughs> yeah i know it's crazy that's so and it, it is ongoing too just like making sure that you're continuously reminding yourself of some of this stuff you know it's not always yes. like a one on done situation yes absolutely that's why i always listen to your podcasts uh you know i reread your book i reread other books over and over again uh, and i think hearing people's stories i think what's special about that is that everybody like every single story that you have on your podcast there is something in there that i just boom completely relate to right even if it's just oh yeah i'd go someplace and i'd get the highest alcohol content beer and i was like oh my god that was me <laughs> yeah. Yeah. one piece of like every single story and you know that's human connection is that's everything that's that's the way that we survive and and grow and become better people that's that's just so true so true um that's awesome yeah i was actually i'm getting ready to kind of compile since i have i think it's well over 200 stories now between people you know on the podcast and then um people just writing in their stories uh -huh. And so I'm just looking to really compile them and have them kind of edited down and, and put them into, into a book that people can read, you know? So yes. that, you know what, <laughs> would you mind with this, if this story was included? Oh, I would be honored. Okay. It'd be so cool. I think yeah. it's really awesome. Um, so what about, you know, other family members? I mean, I know you do, you said your wife is, is all good. She's super on board mm -hmm. and she's very supportive. Mm -hmm. Um, but has there been any other sort of kerfuffle or you know, issues with, with other people in your life? No, it's been actually very, because like I said, the, the two people that, that really drink the most that, well, out of my friends, they, they stopped drinking before me. Uh, so, I mean, that, that was a big That's motivator. Amazing. And, you know, no, everybody's been super supportive. Even, you know, they continue to drink however much they drink. Maybe they drink a little bit less you know, because I don't drink as much, maybe, uh, you know, I know that's true with my wife, but like with my, my family and stuff, they, they, they've, there's not really too much, anybody that was had, I don't think as big as a, a an issue as I did, <clears throat> at least not now that, you know, like, like I said, my father, he's been sober for 30 years or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's been, it, everybody's been super supportive, which is great. I mean, I haven't had those, it, those issues where, what, you don't drink anymore? Oh my God, you know, <laughs> it, it, maybe for a split second, but then it's like, wow, good for you. <laughs> awesome. And That's I'm awesome. like, they must have known how much, <laughs> and my, my wife, she's, she still doesn't really believe <laughs> sometimes because like, I'll, I'll tell her, you kind of look at me kind of strange sometimes. She's like, I'm so proud of you. She's like, Oh my God, you like to drink more than anybody that I know. And yeah, so sometimes it's just kind of 
it's hard to believe that you just stopped. <laughs> and that's, like, awesome. <laughs> that's so cool. That's so great. <laughs> Um, so let me ask you the question that I always sort of ask at the end, which is really, you know, what would you, what would you say to Lorraine who was imagining that it wouldn't even be possible, just, you know, the one who liked to drink more than anyone your wife has ever known <laughs> about kind of, because uh, you have a big smile on your face and you're laughing yeah. a lot and giggling, so it's obvious yeah, yeah. you're having a lot of fun, but how would you sort of encourage her and tell her about what life is like on this other side? Um, that, you know, you're still going to have fun. I think that was one of my biggest things that I thought, oh, I'm not going to be funny. I'm not going to have fun. I'm not going to, you know, how boring, you know, not drinking. And it's just the opposite. I mean, I've always been like a happy drunk. <laughs> you know, I was never, you know, depressed. Yeah, of course we all get depressed sometimes, but you know, I was, I was the, oh, I'd have a couple of drinks and I don't get into a bad mood. I, we didn't get into any arguments or anything like that. Yeah, but I think I would just say, you know, everything is so much better. You know, I, I meant to prepare myself for this question because I know you asked it. <laughs> but it was the one thing I didn't prepare for. But it's better unprepared. <laughs> yes, I, I think that's just it. That, that, you know, it's just so, so false that you can't have fun without alcohol and that you're going to be a different person. No, you become the person that you really are. And that's why we should all strive to be the people that we are, not try to change ourselves into a person that we think we should be. We need to be the people that we are. And you can't be that if you're drunk all the time. <laughs> oh, I love that. That gave me chills. Serious chills. It was beautiful. So true. Thank you. <laughs> so true. Um, wow, that was great. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to share? Um, just for anybody that's, you know, even thinking that they might have a problem, just, just say, yeah, you have a problem. If, if you think that you have a problem, you have a problem. Maybe it's not a big problem. Maybe it's not a, a you know, you're going to end up in a, <laughs> A, you know, you're not going to end up in a rehab or AA, you know, those aren't the only choices that there is a choice that you present and that others, you know, I, I think are going to present, you know, and that, you know, it's, it, it's, you're not alone. You're not alone. There's, everybody's got a story that's, that you can relate to in some part. And, you know, your, your wonderful community online too, the, you know, everybody that does the blogs that make it my community, it just, it, it's just great. Everybody's so loving and, and that's what we need. It's just open hearts. Everybody <laughs> come into it wholehearted um, and just become the people that we, that we are. That's, that's it. Awesome. I love that so much. Well, thank, thank you so much. much. <laughs> so yeah. nice to talk to you. <laughs> So, so awesome to meet you and talk to you. Um, I super enjoyed this and, <laughs> and uh, good luck in the future. And I can't wait for the, the next book. <laughs> Just keep them going. Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm not going to write a word of it. It's going to be the best. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's going to be everybody's stories, which I always am told it's the most powerful part. And it I believe it's true. It's like, that's how we heal. That's how we learn. That's how we think new things are possible. So it's really yes, silly. I agree. Well, thank you so much. All right. Have a great <laughs> day, Lorraine. You too. Let me ask you a question. What is better than change? <laughs> Lasting change, of course. And if you've had trouble making change stick, either with alcohol or in any other area of your life, you are in for a treat. I created the 100 Days of Lasting Change to ensure that we don't just change for a moment, but we truly transform for a lifetime. And this program is so close to my heart. Thousands of people have been through it and their results are incredible. But don't take my word for it. Check it out at thisnakedmind.com forward slash 100 days. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast as it truly helps the message reach somebody who might need to hear it today. Thank you.